Archimandrite Seraphim has been a monastic for decades. In 2015, he was made abbot of Holy Cross Monastery in Wayne, West Virginia, which has seen incredible growth over the past few years. So much so that they have outgrown their, ch their church. So they're currently running a capital campaign to raise money for a new church. If you're able to help, please find the link below this video uh, to their website uh, where you can contribute uh, to this uh, worthy cause. I was recently up at the monastery and uh, Abbot Seraphim kindly carved out some time out of his very busy schedule uh, to conduct this interview. So I'm really grateful to him uh, for the time he gave me and I hope you will enjoy this episode from my interview with Abbot Seraphim. When a young man comes and he wants to become a monastic, um, the first thing um, I ask him to do is to try to come for at least a week, two weeks, and spend some time with us. Um, he, oftentimes for men who are living in the world and, they're, and they have jobs, that's a difficult thing to do, but I find it necessary because um, just coming for a weekend visit doesn't really tell you what monastic life is about. So uh, coming for uh, two weeks or at the very least one week gives them a better taste of our life and helps us to get to know them better to see if they're appropriate, if they would, if they could work out. And I would be meeting with them uh, probably on a daily basis while they're here. They would be working with us, doing obediences with us, going to church with us, following our schedule. Um, and that usually that usually dispels any sort of romantic notions they have, you know, uh, getting getting up at 5 a.m. and or getting up for your prayer roll at 3:30 or 4, and then going to church and then going back to your cell and doing more of your prayer roll until the bell rings at 9 o'clock. Then we start obediences. Um, that usually weeds out those who are just looking for a, a romantic uh, kind of life. Um, then they would also, I would also ask them to have their priest send me a letter of recommendation. Um, if they have a spiritual father, to have that. Um, oftentimes with young men today, though, not many of them have a spiritual father. They confess to their parish priest, but it's just confession. They don't have much guidance. But if I can get a letter of recommendation from their priest, that's good. Um, then they would come, and as I said before, they would spend a six-month candidate period. But before they even come, I would ask them if they had a prayer rule and what that prayer rule is. And depending on uh, how much time they have available, their work experience, uh, their, uh, their um, uh, schooling, whatever, um, if they have time, then I would give them a prayer rule that I think would be appropriate for them. And, and then they can try that out. Unfortunately, most young people today don't have a prayer rule. Um, they've just never been given one. So that discipline, you know, maybe this whole process might occur over a year's time, sometimes more, sometimes a little less. And, um, and I tell them, if you're not faithful to that prayer rule, you have to let me know. And so we can see if they're able, if they're able to do that. Um, that's usually the preparation. Of course, if they have other sort of obligations, like if they were married and divorced and they have uh, to support their children, that's completely different. I used to have an age limit. I used to say 40. Above 40, we won't take anyone because if a man's been living alone um, and he's 30 or 40 years old, he's pretty set in his ways. He gets up when he wants to. He prays if he wants to, for however long he wants to. He eats what he wants to. He goes to church if he, <clears throat> if he wants to. And without realizing it, he can slip into a very selfish lifestyle, just without even intending to. I, it's not always the rule. I know two elderly sisters who took care of their mother and ended up never getting married, but their, their whole life was centered around the church and they had a spiritual father, and, and so they didn't fall into that trap. But many do, 
And so and when they come to the monastery, when they try to be a monk in their 30s or, or even more so in their 40s, it's very difficult for them to live in a structured environment, a structure that they didn't create. Um, recently, uh, two years ago, there was a man who came to visit who was, uh, I think at the time he was 68 years old. And I've never accepted anyone that age. And I really think it was the Holy Spirit because he was telling me about his life and how, how much he wanted to just leave the world. He, he had had a pretty uh, successful career and he wanted to leave it all and follow Christ. And uh, for some reason I found myself saying, well, we, why don't we look into this? Why don't we explore this? And when my first meeting with him was over, I, I, I thought, did I just say all that to a 68-year-old man? And, uh, and I did, and um, he's been here now for two years, and um, he's, he's becoming a very good monk. He's a novice, and um, I think he'll persevere until the end. And he's been a tremendous asset to the community, but also he takes his spiritual life uh, most seriously. He's very faithful to his prayer rule, and um, um, this was an exception. Usually, I, um, above 30, I, I, I'm hesitant. Above 40, I'm very hesitant, but it depends on, on the individual. Uh, we've even had young men coming who are 15, 16 years old, but of course we can't accept them at that, at that age. Um, but that's generally what I would, what I would look for, Being, giving them a prayer rule, and seeing if they can fulfill that, if they have a desire for prayer. If there's no desire for prayer, um, then it's not going to work. It's just not, not going to work. Some men just want to live in community. They feel safe living in community. I remember one man said, you know, I was in the army for years. I made a career out of it. I'm used to living with a bunch of men, and I, I get along with people, and I work really hard, and I'm a good cook, and but he, he wasn't praying, you know, he, he didn't really understand what our life was like. So um, prayer is probably the most important um, requirement. Some, some love of prayer, even though it's very difficult, some love of prayer has to be there. Hi again, hope you enjoyed this episode for my interview with Abbot Seraphim. Please subscribe to get notified when new videos become available. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider becoming a patron of uh, this channel. Uh, there's a link to the patronage program below this video. Thanks so much for your support, and we'll see you soon.